Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a freshwater uh, ichthyologist, fish biologist and also a PhD student specialising and studying the evolution of lower kind catfishes, um, also known as plecos uh, within the aquarium trade. So I'm going to talk about, well I think it's somewhat controversial because I see a lot do you need plants in your aquarium? Does it add to stability? Does it make an aquarium more stable? And the answer is, well, do you need aquarium plants? They, there's no doubt plants are beautiful, they're unusual, they're interesting, but do they add to stability? And do you need them? And the answer is really just no. And I think a lot of people are really confusing the fact that they see plants and they think that that space is more natural. Um, a lot of people are, don't see like spaces without plants and think that's um, very, um, it's not natural, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for what's around it. And I wonder whether sometimes we're getting so confused with what we're seeing now, so much environmental change, actually influencing what we're seeing as natural and actual natural spaces particularly um, invasive plants, there are many species of plants that are invasive and that's not just a terrestrial plant problem. Also, like in freshwater we have Elodia is a massively invasive problem, the multiple species are sold under that name. Skunk cabbage um, or skunk lettuce, that is very invasive within the UK. So a lot of plants you might see them actually growing where they shouldn't be and they'll be changing the whole actual nutrients and ecosystem within the, um, within the fresh water. And in fresh water we have so many other organisms that might be interacting with the plants, might be competing with plants in different senses and also relying on there not being so many plants, so algae, but also filtering uh, organisms such as bryzoa, sponges, and therefore makes it a little bit more of a complicated topic. Um, other aspects of that is that fresh water is actually particularly harsh for um, plants, generally because it's gen low nutrients, uh, therefore that well, algae proliferate much faster anyway, um, but so nutrients, plants need nutrients mostly. The high flow areas um, might cause particular issues. Then you've got deep water or turbid water for whether it's tannins or something like that, depth. Um, make it dark. Does it, is there places for the plants actually to root? And there's many solutions plants use to actually get around this problem and it does depend on where in the river you are. Other aspects is that rivers and lakes or water in general contains lower oxygen than, um, than the terrestrial environment so it does make it a little bit more harsh for plants to actually survive. So what we're seeing when it comes to plants being present or not, actually is it natural and a lot of the time where you see these planter tanks sold as natural, they're not, they're completely different. The true natural I'd say is really just biotope and that is an art form of its own and you don't have to do it but remember you've got to meet your fit, if you're having fishes they are sentient organisms, you've got to meet their behavioural and physiological requirements. And with plants you're adding a little bit more of a complexity layer to that. It doesn't mean that um, it's not complex without it, it's just adding quite a few different variables to the mix. So there's so many reasons that plants maybe don't make it as stable or they, I think the stability of plants is very much um, overrated, the actual addition, and even caring for plants can make an aquarium less stable, particularly with CO2, and then oxygen levels in general. So it's commonly thought a lot of people will say that plants only respire at night. No, plants constantly respire. It's photosynthesis that's largely limited. It doesn't mean that um, things are going to suffocate. Um, that's a really common like houseplant myth that they they suffocate you at night, 
but it does make it there's so many more variables to it and it really does vary with plant morphology for example floating and emergent uh, leaf plants are shown to substantially remove oxygen from the water below and therefore you need a good current maybe if you're looking at that which isn't great for the plant a lot of floating plants don't enjoy that or maybe looking at fishes that are adaptive for lower oxygen so whether they can facultatively or obligately air breathe and to what extent because quite a few lower carbs can do it but they're really not going to do well in low oxygen and especially not low flow and the thing is also with if you're thinking of CO2 um, that CO2 is a toxic chemical um, to toxic compound so bear that in mind it's adding that sort of layer of complexity that is very difficult to predict so nutrients is another big one uh, when it comes to plants and I think that's why people see it as adding stability whereas you've got to think a little bit more about what plants you've got and a lot of the literature will focus on plants that we don't actually keep in aquariums, especially like bulrushes, um, reeds, rushes, even water lilies. A lot of people don't keep those big um, nutrient demanding ones in the aquarium. And a lot of this sort of nutrients uptake will depend on um, or well, depend on the actual nutrients you're feeding it and a ratio of the different ones, particularly. Uh, plants, especially if you're interested in horticulture or here or know about NPK, nitrogen, uh, phosphate and potassium. Um, so, or phosphorus rather than phosphate. Um, those are some of the major elements that plants need to grow. And it kind of, I've lost my trail of thought a little bit, but the actual ratio they're going to take up of each depends on the levels of the others in the aquarium, depends on the morphology, it's going to depend on the lighting, it's going to depend on the temperature, the oxygen, the morphology of plant, um, morphology of plants change depend on the condition all the time, or the environment. So different species uptake different levels of ammonia and nitrates, that depends on the actual conditions as well, make it so hard to predict which they're going to be uptaking. And also depending on where, is that nutrients accessible ideally to the plant? Is it like, is there the actual um, nutrient cycling that's easy to access, if you get what I mean? So, so, so different plants also depending whether they're adapted to soft or hard water will uptake um, ammonia and nitrates differently. And different so a lot of the studies look at do look at different parameters and that will affect the growth and therefore the conditions um, and quite a few of these were actually looking at um, uptake of ammonia nitrates do use air pumps and this is for supply of oxygen because plants do need oxygen a massive thing to bear in mind is a lot of studies are focused on aquaculture or hydropon well aquaculture in general and hydroponics aquaponics this is largely not looking at the fish we're keeping firstly but it's also maybe not looking at the types of plants we had to keep in the aquarium it's look at different densities different substrates different they've got and it's very short term you're not looking at keeping fish long term you're not ideally or probably looking at keeping the plants long term and it's mostly focused on probably the fact that you don't actually want to be put it, putting a lot of fish waste in um, waterways and there's going to be issues with sewage particularly but a massive thing that think about um, nutrients is actually removing uh, dead rotting or even just certain vegetation in general because otherwise you're just recirculating that nutrients especially if you're feeding the fish which you need to do because there's so much nutrition you're not going to get just from the tank itself um, uh, particularly when it comes to well 
many different organisms that you, you need to be removing that sort of plants and therefore and then it adds into my sort of water change video but that is why it's so important to actually be removing the excess plants or dead plant matter particularly because it's going to be decaying and it is shown that if you're not removing it you're just decreasing water quality so carbon is another one and actually floating plants and emergent vegetation is shown to actually pump carbon into the soils and water flow like some sort of carbon storage i guess it's mostly going to be it might be co2 um, which isn't great you don't want it being pumped into the tank particularly for fishes and the um, presence of plants trapping waste as well so um, especially if you're having sort of plants along um, the bottom or in general they're going to influence the whole balance of nutrients and depleting oxygen as decomposition occurs so there is a lot more um, to this topic it's not as simple as add plants then make your tank more stable and it is something like I always worried about removing plants or not having plants until um, all my tanks are very low nutrients uh, they tend not to um, a lot of aquarium plants tend not to do so well but and there's no need to worry you don't need plants there's a lot more to it and they are an aesthetic thing so if you like plants go for plants but think a little bit more into it and don't sort of blame yourself if you can't have them uh, or if you don't want them it's fine I recommend looking at biotope competitions just for, to see what they have available and looking at actually true natural aquariums and there's so much more to that enrichment layer than plants I think decor has so much to offer um, and anyway I think especially if you're new to fish don't sort of blast yourself on having um, not having like live plants plastic plants can be cool too they're just a pain to clean and they get a bit silty but there's so much more to it than just having live plants and I think that's worth recognizing and they do add that layer of complexity. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, uh, you can ask any questions. I, this isn't to bash anyone that like has plants, because it's just like I think it's something that needs addressing. That there's a lot more to that presence of plants. Um, plants alive or dead, I have to say. But anyway, thank you for watching.